Hello everyone, Kaz here. Over the weekend, I had the pleasure of joining in with the Mirthwood beta playtest, so I wanted to share my experience with you and give you my thoughts on it so far. If you haven't seen Mirthwood before, it's a medieval RPG that basically allows you to be whoever you want and create your own adventure. Please remember that this is a beta version, so I did run into some bugs and there were some elements missing, but these will be implemented for the full release on November the 6th. So without further ado, let's get started. I started out on my Mirthwood journey by creating my character. I could pick from a male or female body type, with some customization options for skin tone, hairstyle, etc. There weren't that many options to choose from, which was a bit of a shame, but it did the job. I do hope they had some more options for the full release to give it some more variety. Next I got to pick my land of origin, which each added a different trait to my character. I chose this one because I really like elves, and it gave me the trait Conscientious which for my first playthrough I thought would be nice because I want to be a polite, law-abiding citizen before diving into any criminal activities later on. Then I got to choose my social class, which each gave a positive and a negative trait. I chose peasant because energy would be less of a worry and I had a feeling I was going to be quite busy, so this would benefit me the most. It said I was going to be socially unpolished, but I'm pretty introverted anyway, so I guess it might be kind of accurate. Finally, I got to pick my profession, and this is the one that I definitely had the hardest time choosing. Again, each of the options gave a positive and negative trait, which affected different areas of the game. So I went with Herbalist because I thought maybe I could do some extra foraging and sell some potions or something. Once I finished with my character, the prologue began, which introduced me to some basic game mechanics and controls. I had to find my brother Asher and forage for some ingredients to cook dinner for my family. Now before I go any further, I want to warn you that there are some darker themes covered in Mirthwood, so be prepared. Over dinner, my family talked about a war that was happening over the hills, and with that, I went to bed for the night. The embers of war burn. After all these years, it has finally reached your doorstep. You must reach the docks. To be honest, I wasn't expecting my story to start like this, but I appreciate the change from the standard, cosy game introductions. My mother had been injured in the raid, so my father and brother were staying back to help her. They told me to run west to find the docks and escape on a boat. I had my first taste of combat when I came across a raider on the way. You have a normal attack and a heavy attack, as well as block, dodge and roll. This first battle felt kind of easy because he didn't really attack back that much, but it was good to figure out the controls. I carried on my journey and came across this chap called Thorn, who was in trouble for abandoning his post while he was meant to guard the village bridge. He said he left his post to intercept a group that were trying to poison the village water supply. I promise I did consider freeing him, but to be honest, I was more concerned about making it to the boat, so I just left them alone. Now I did feel pretty bad about not saving Thorn, so when I came across another raider fighting a friendly soldier, I thought I'd give him a hand this time. Turns out I'm quite bad at the melee combat and took a lot of damage, but we took him down and I was rewarded with 5 gold and a much needed snack. Anyway, I made it to the docks and got to enjoy this lovely cutscene. It came to pass that bitter conflict and ceaseless war engulfed the continent. Those who dared to brave the sea fled. You were there. This is where your journey begins. The boat took me to the free lands where I was safe from the raiders and I met a man who asked me to take a horse to a stranger. After a quick pet, obviously, I climbed on the horse and galloped a long way to the west to meet the stranger. I was hoping I'd get to keep the horse but sadly the stranger just jumped on it and left. I went to investigate my new property and found the house deeds along with a note in my mailbox. My house was pretty run down, with just a sleeping bag and the remains of a campfire inside, which seemed like a fire hazard to me. I tried to go and investigate the chest and workbench, but I guess the game didn't want me to go yet, so with that I wrapped up my day and went to bed for the night. I was up and ready for my first day, and I wanted to go and explore and see what was about, so I headed down the south road to the village of Bright Oak. I found a combat training area and picked up this rusty iron sword that was lying around, which was slightly better than my copper one. You can just walk into any unlocked building, which is cool. And yes, I was tempted to steal something, but remember, I'm playing as a good citizen for now, and it's probably not a great idea to rob everyone before I've even met them. 
The interaction system with NPCs is very similar to The Sims, where you can pick what to talk about from a few different categories. My first real conversation was with Conrad, so I thought I'd start off slow with some small talk, which went brilliantly, but I was not giving up yet and was happily flirting and chatting away with Emerson right until I passed out from hunger. But the good thing is, you don't lose any items or money when you die, so no need to panic. Anyway, I returned to the village and found the marketplace which had some interesting information. Mirthwood has its own economy and goods vary in price depending on supply and demand. This means selling the same type of crop all the time will lower its value. I really like this addition because it means you'll have to switch up what you grow and sell at the right time. I also saw a request ledger which didn't have anything on it but I imagine you can fulfil these for rewards. I opened the chest that was outside my house and found some copper tools, seeds and a few resources. You can apply filters inside the chest to make sorting easier and there is a quick sort button which will dump all of the matching items into the chest. This was very handy and made inventory management much simpler, although I do want to talk about an annoying inventory thing that I found out later. There is a radial style menu instead of a traditional hotbar which I think really suits the style of the game and it keeps the hotbar off your screen which makes it more immersive and means there's more room to appreciate this beautiful art style which I love. I spent the day gathering some more resources until I passed out from hunger once again so I decided it would be sensible to make a cooking pot. There were a few recipes already available so it doesn't look like you have to learn them but I wonder if you might be able to find some others or learn more in the full version. After some more exploring in Bright Oak, I found the blacksmith and realised I needed 750 coins to purchase an iron toolkit. This seemed miles away, so I figured I needed a way to earn some cash, legally, obviously. I visited the local farm to see what they had to offer and they had a whole range of animals for sale. I love that there are different breeds of each animal too, but I soon saw the price and the dream of a huge animal ranch faded into the distance. I had to go back to basics and plant some crops. There is a grid system which you can toggle on and off to help with building, which I think is great because it gives you much more freedom of placement and you can line things up nice and neatly. I added some paths to my property and again it works similar to The Sims where you just spray paint the terrain. I think it worked really well and blended together with the grass really nicely. When I was out gathering even more materials, I got my first level up in trades. There are six different skills for you to level up and earn skill cards and perks along the way. I managed to collect 50 wood and 50 stone, which was enough resources to repair the interior of my house. I didn't exactly have any furniture to put in it just yet, but it was nice to get it ready. Another thing I like about the game is the day and night cycle. It doesn't force you to go to bed at 2am and you can stay up all night if you choose. The only thing you have to worry about is your stamina bar, which can be regenerated by sleeping, potions or food. For this playthrough, I wanted to do more exploring and less questing so I could save more gameplay for the full release and also not give too many spoilers away for you guys. Out on my travels, I saw animals that roam the land which you can kill to get food or materials. So far I've only seen rabbits and deer but a bit later on I ran into some more dangerous creatures. I found this guy hanging out in the marsh and after speaking to him he said I could have his painting which I took and hung up in my empty home. I also found the Medville Meadery, which happened to be a quest, and found this poor chap who unalived himself after his wife left him and his sick daughter passed away, which was very sad. Then I looted him. There were some bandits here to fight. I do enjoy the combat system, and it feels very satisfying to win. It's not too difficult, but it does give you a challenge. I returned home to make an anvil and see what I could craft, and thought a hunter's bow would be good for fighting in long-range combat or animals. I was so happy to see I didn't have to fuss around making arrows and I had an unlimited amount automatically. I tested out my new bow on this poor deer and it took a sec to get used to but seemed pretty efficient. I wiped out another bandit in no time with it and avoided taking any damage. My next big discovery was the old forest campsite which acted as a second property. There was a second chest there with a few materials, a workbench and a bed but the best part was finding out I could fast travel between my farm and the campsite, which would save me so much time compared to running around everywhere. I haven't spoken about the map yet, but it's really big and when you discover a new location, it gets added as this cute little picture. The only thing I wish was if I could hover over a location and its name would pop up, that would be really helpful. I ventured a bit further afield and ran into my first monster called a Silt Lurker. I used my newly crafted bow and managed to take him down relatively easily. 
This is when I started having issues with the inventory, which I mentioned earlier. You can only carry a certain number of item types. So I have eight slots for materials and eight slots for food, etc. Meaning I had to drop less important items in order to loot everything. But I did find out through the Discord server that there was a man I could trade some colourful feathers with in exchange for more inventory slots or skill slots. I really don't mind having to upgrade the total inventory space, but I'm not keen on being limited by categories. Back at my homestead, my crops were growing nicely, and because there isn't a set day and night cycle, sometimes I could water them twice in a day and gather them even quicker. I wandered over to the market and sold my peas, and finally had enough coins to buy the iron toolkit. I tried to talk to the blacksmith, but he was not interested, and clearly my social skills needed some polishing. In order to upgrade my pickaxe, I needed to mine some iron ore, which I could find in the marsh area. I also found another town called Ashmere, which was sat on top of the swamp on wooden stilts. I revisited the inventory guide to buy a new skill slot, which allowed me to apply another skill card, helping me get more ore and wood. While searching for iron, I came across an abandoned watchtower and fought a criminal called Reginald Darcy, who got absolutely destroyed by my bow. And to be honest, I think that the bow seemed like the perfect weapon of choice for me. I looted the area and got some much stronger armour, as well as a wooden chair. I saw a thief in the area too, so I thought I'd take him out on the way, but apparently he had some wolf friends, so I had to leg it from that battle. I repaired the bridge to Ashmere for 100 wood, but I didn't get anything for it, so that kind of seemed like a waste. Anyway, I returned home to place my newly acquired chair, but was very disappointed to find out that I couldn't sit down on it. I wanted to make the iron pickaxe, so I needed 10 iron bars, which each bar costing 10 ore. Now, if I'm doing my maths correctly, that's 100 iron ore, which seems pretty expensive, especially when a toolkit is also required for each tool, and my main source of income currently is selling peas. Speaking of peas, I broke them, but in a good way. After I watered them, they became gatherable again almost immediately, so I just carried on picking them until I got bored. Then I went to the market once again to sell my peas and got over a thousand coins which meant it was time to make a very important investment. A chicken. I was so looking forward to naming her but I didn't get the option to, which I really hope they change for the full game. Unfortunately she wasn't very happy with me because I did forget to buy her a coop to actually live in. I tried to cheer her up and feed her some hay but she wouldn't take it so I guess now I just own a sad chicken. Anyway, the good news is my iron had finally smelted, so now I could make my iron pickaxe. I decided to wrap up my playthrough by taking it for a spin, and I was able to destroy much bigger rocks which gave me way more iron than before. So I ended my first Mirthwood journey with an iron pickaxe, a sad chicken, and broken peas. But I really enjoyed my time, and I'll quickly run you through my thoughts on the game. Even though this was a beta playtest with some elements missing, I still felt like it was full of gameplay and I really enjoyed my time playing it. There were a couple bugs, mainly with the NPC interaction button and profile not showing, but a patch was released during the playtest to fix that, which is really positive because it seems like the devs really care about the game. I really like the interaction system with the NPCs, and I'm looking forward to getting more time to build relationships with them and even get married. The art style of the game is beautiful and makes it really enjoyable to spend time just exploring the world. I really like the narration, and I thought that the cutscenes are really well done, along with good music and sound effects. Although I didn't get very far into the main story, I'm really intrigued to see where it goes and there are a lot of side quests and contracts to complete. I also like that it includes some darker themes, which is a refreshing change from the always happy, 24-7 style cosy games that we usually get. There is a lot of freedom to play how you like and build your own story. The map is free for you to explore and there are so many caves, buildings and people to discover. Moving on to the combat, there only seems to be two types being melee and archery and the bow I was using might be a little bit overpowered. But the combat itself felt clean and not too difficult. It was challenging enough so that winning a battle felt satisfying although I didn't make that much use of the dodge or roll. When it came to building the farm, the option to have the grid on or off was fantastic and I think it will allow a lot of creativity. It's a shame the time went by so quick and I didn't have much chance to do decoration or really start a farm, but at least it gives me something to look forward to. There were also some handy quality of life features in place, like switching between tools with the mouse wheel and the quick saw inventory button. However, that does bring me on to my improvements. 
In the full version of the game, I would like to see the inventory limit of item types removed and instead replaced with an overall cap because I think the limit was just unnecessary and got a bit frustrating. Like I mentioned before, I'm totally fine with them having a full inventory limit, but splitting it into categories just seems like overkill. I would also like larger text on items that were in chests, or just generally a bigger UI for storage, because if the game does come to Steam Deck like planned, then on a smaller screen I can definitely see small text becoming a problem. Another quality of life improvement could be having some form of relationship tracking tab, somewhere that you can see all of the NPCs that you've met as well as your relationship meter with them, and maybe traits too could be handy. Next, kind of a smaller one, but I really wanted to make use of the furniture, like being able to sit down on chairs so I can visit the taverns and not be awkwardly stood up. I also had a bit of a problem with the NPCs walking away when I was talking to them, which broke the immersion a bit, although that might just be a bug in the playtest, so we'll have to wait and see. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, I really want an option to hide my hat or override armour with a different cosmetic because instead of seeing my beautiful character that I made, I spent most of my time looking at a dirty rust bucket helmet, which was a big shame. Overall, I had an amazing time playing the beta version, and I literally don't know what to do with myself now it's gone. Honestly, I can't wait for the full version, which is going to release on November the 6th. There is also another playtest planned for mid-October, so if you want the chance to join, then I've linked their Discord in the description box down below, and that will have all of the information you need to sign up. I've also linked my own Discord server too, which you can join to stay up to date on the latest news and game releases. Thank you all for watching, see you soon!